Okay, this week in this series, we've been working on uh, superimposing stuff, uh, screening, blue screening, keying, alpha channels, that sort of stuff. Today we're going to be looking at how to, uh, if you have a object in the 3D environment in Blender, how to superimpose that over uh, a, a video. Once again, there's multiple ways you could do this. You could export the video and then key out the colors later on in another application. But Blender has its compositor, which is one of the main features of the compositor is doing just this. So I'm working with Blender 2.6 uh, here, 2.60, uh, but most of 2.5 should be very similar, and uh, 2.4, even though it's kind of old, uh, things are going to be in different places, but still going to be pretty much the same concept. So here we have the default scene here. I'm going to press uh, one of my number pads to go into front view. Spacebar, I'm going to type in camera and go align camera to view here, which control alt number pad zero is supposed to do, but doesn't seem to be doing it. I don't know if that's a glitch, but you can get to it in that menu there. So right now we've got this cube we can move around and we can hit F12 and render that out. And the lighting isn't very good, so we can move that over here so we can actually see our cube. There we go. Uh, so, but let's say we have a video and we want to, you know, as we said, superimpose it, you need to be able to line it up. So what we're going to do is uh, hovering, make sure your cursor is over the 3D view here. We're going to hit T to get rid of that sidebar over there because we don't need that. And then N to bring up this other one. And right here we have background images. Let's check that. Say add image. It's not set. Let's open. And I'm going to find a video here of me uh, chopping up some old furniture. So there we are. I can then hit Alt A and you can see the video playing right there. Great. Uh, okay, so let's start moving this box around. So I'm going to select it by right-clicking it, G to grab it. I'm going to scale it down, scale it out, put it about where that, that drawer is. You know, obviously, we're going over the basics today. To actually do this properly, you're going to spend a lot of time tweaking stuff, lighting and coloring and stuff. But there we have it there. I'm going to hit... Uh, Shift and up arrow a few times, jumping 10 frames each time I hit the up arrow, and boom. And it's this next hit I want. So, oops, I just went back to the first frame. Um, right about here, right here, I want to set a keyframe uh, for that cube. So the cube is selected, I'm going to hit I. I'm going to set the location, rotation, and scale. Then I'm going to go a few more frames right about to there. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab it on the y-axis, move it forward, probably move it over, and probably rotate it on the z-axis this way a little bit, and maybe even a little bit on the x-axis, and just make sure it goes out of the camera view right there. And I'm going to set another keyframe. So now, uh, let me hit shift down arrow a few times and then we'll hit alt a and boom there's our animation not perfect once again you can spend a lot more time tweaking it but the video we're watching right now that's in the background is just for the view here um, if we hit f12 and render you can see you don't see that image well that's where the compositor comes in so we can hit uh, control and then left arrow to get to the compositor or you can click this menu up here and go to compositing Let's say use nodes, backdrop, and here, this is our scene here. We're going to hit this little camera here to render out that shot of the cube. And you can see here that it has an alpha channel. Anything that isn't an object in the background is transparent, even though the actual image rendered out has the gray background. At this point, we're going to hit shift A. We're going to say input, uh, and we're going to say image. Well, you don't have to say open because we've already imported the video. We'll just click this little icon here and choose the video here. So at this point, we want to make sure that we say auto refresh cycle. Um, start frame and offset are fine. We need to set number of frames. Uh, and if you watch the other tutorials, I showed you how in the series, which there will be an annotation somewhere in this video to the playlist. I showed you how to go to textures and, and choose all that uh, to show how many frames uh, there are in a video. It would be nice if they added a button here but there is a button over there. But I know that this video is 308 frames because I have done like three tutorials on it so far. Okay, so at this point we can minimize those if we'd like just to keep things closed up, a little more room here. Uh, then we're going to hit Shift A. And when we were importing in another video, uh, a video that had a black background or really any color, uh, we were using um, this 
well, with the black background, we're using the mix node. Here we're going to use this alpha over. And we're going to connect them in. A little confusing because the top layer should go on the bottom and the bottom layer should go on the top here. That's just a little weird, but at this point we're going to choose another output view and we're going to connect this to here so that we can see what's going on. We can hit Z a few times, or I'm sorry, V a few times to zoom out. Now you'll notice that our cube is not in the same place as it was before. That's because our render image is one size and our background image is another size. Now, we could go here and make sure that our render size, which I know my background video is 1080p, make sure it's the same and then hit F12 and things should line up then. There we go. Uh, another thing you can do, let's say we didn't want to render at that, let's say we're, we're going to do 720p. We'll render that out once again. It doesn't line up right uh, and you can actually even at points uh, if we actually put this out to our compositor you'll see that it's even cropping some of the video so that's all wrong so you can either make sure that the dimensions are your background video which for best quality that's probably what you're going to want to do but if for some reason you're going to go another size this is our video right here our background video we can hit shift a we can go down here to distort we can do scale drag this up until that line highlights, it should auto connect things, or you can manually connect the input and output. And here we can say render size. So no matter what I have the render size set to, it's going to set our background video to be that same size. Um, so at this point, you can scroll through, but things take a little bit longer to render because it's actually compositing everything each time. Um, now, if I was to hit shift up arrow, few times, jumping 10 frames each time I do that. Now you notice right here that the cube should have moved. Well, the reason is it's not rendering the 3D view each time because that would slow things down even more. So if we wanted to update that, we can just come here and click this little render button again or hit F12 and it renders it. So at this point, I'm going to hit down arrow a few times and uh, a few more times. Uh, let's see. I don't want to start this video at the very beginning. I think right about here. So what frame are we on? We are on frame 136 here. So I'm going to start my start frame in this case to 136 because I don't care about anything before that because I actually smashed the box once and that's not going to look right because I'm not I didn't do any animation for the cube. So all depends on your animation here. And uh, we'll let it render to, to the end 250 there. So um, that's about it. At this point, we're going to say whatever video format we want. I like using XVID. Um, and I'm going to save this as firewood4.avi. And um, also, probably should have done this at the beginning. I'm going to set the output to 30 frames a second since that's what my original video is. Um, now, also, you notice this cube doesn't look like it's really in the scene. It's just kind of sitting there. There's no shadows. That's a whole bunch. You can spend all day tweaking stuff, some of it in the compositor, adjusting color levels, uh, color, color balance, uh, adjusting the lightings in your scene, putting a plane to catch the shadow, but that is transparent. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. I'm just showing you the basics here. At this point, I'm going to click Animate. And as you can see, it's starting to animate. It, render, it renders the 3D view and then overlays it in the compositor. Just make sure that you have connected it to the compositor node here so that it actually composites when it renders. Now, uh, while this is rendering, and at the end I'll play you the video, uh, you notice one, it's not the fastest in the world. That's just something you have to live with. <laughs> uh, another thing is uh, you can do this with any 3D object. You can have multiple objects. You can have a whole scene. Uh, also, you can do things like fire or smoke and stuff like that. Although, if you're doing that, you may want to connect uh, this alpha channel to this fact or mess with these things a little bit because sometimes you might get a little bit of a border around things like smoke and fire. Messing with this number or connecting that alpha out to it will help uh, alleviate that. Um, so there's that. Also, I want to take this moment to talk about motion capture and or motion tracking and camera tracking. I've been using Linux for seven, eight years now. Yeah, somewhere around there. And um, 
I used to do a whole lot of video editing in Windows before I switched. And when I switched to Linux, I did searches. There was a lot of um, very expensive, professional, I say that with quotation marks with my fingers, um, video editing applications out there for Linux. But there wasn't very much for video editing when it came to free and open source software. Um, and in the last just two years, we've come a long way. Blender has always been good for effects, but not a whole lot for big video editing. Uh, Caden Live has come a long way in just the last year. Uh, we also have things like OpenShot, which I really haven't messed with much. But um, we have had, for about a year now, some really good products. Uh, I, in my personal opinion, and I've done a lot of video editing in my life, um, the only thing we were missing uh, was some good open source video tracking and camera tracking. Um, and that would be my response when people would say how I thought you know, open source is doing with video editing. I say we can do a little more with stability, but things are usable. And as far as features, those two, video tracking and camera tracking. Well, Blender has both of those now, but they're, they're still, they're very usable, but still in early development. Uh, camera tracking, I believe, is going to be in the next release officially. I'm not sure about uh, motion tracking, object tracking. Um, that might be in a different uh, compile, but it will be in the default eventually. Um, and the videos I've watched, if you go to YouTube, you can find tutorials by other people and sample videos people have done, and they all look great. So this is very exciting, uh, something that's coming soon. And once it's in the official uh, release and I have a chance to play with it, I'll probably do some videos on it because it is something that excites me. So instead of manually animating something like that, we could just link it to the object I'm actually hitting, and it should, in theory, follow it. If this camera... Uh, was not on a tripod, someone was holding it, was moving, you can do camera tracking to where we could do what we just did and it would still match up. So Blender is growing, growing, growing. And so it's just video editing in the open source world altogether. It's the one place, one of the very few places I feel that we've lacked in years past, but we have, just like everything else, have caught up and I feel like we're getting ready to surpass the closed source uh, software. So anyway, uh, once again, this was very basic. I thank you for watching. I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. I hope that you have a great day. And here is that final render of this uh, little animation. Thank you again.